I think uh, each country has its own specificities, particular Spain, whether it's an independence movement, and of course a reaction to a government's very harsh response of sending leaders to jails with long terms. But otherwise, in general, at the conscious level, there is a rebellion against an economic system that is contributing to increasing the divergence between the have and the have not. And if I interpret this at the psychosocial level, it really means it's a system, a transaction-based society, that has led to an increase in the use of one another as objects of narcissistic gratification, which is really the perverse dynamics. And it's really a rebellion against perverse dynamics and loss of meanings. Of course, uh, each country will have its own uh, particularity. I think you mentioned Bolivia, where there the idea is that um, someone that's uh, trying to stay in power longer than he should, probably an election that he it looks like he may have lost, but he doesn't want to recognize. In Chile, it is about social condition, uh, living standards, and the, the trigger was an increase in a subway fare. But the fact that while the government decreased, uh, reversed the policy, and yet there are still protests, show that there's something deeper going on, which is, in my view, a rebellion against perverse dynamics. I'll respond to the second point first. The more there is an understanding between groups, between uh, groups in a society, by understanding, again, I mean, I mean it in a psychosocial perspective, in other words, identification, experience for oneself, what the experience of the other group is, that's identification, the less there is a propensity for splitting, and therefore the more room there is for increased understanding and really increased empathic availability towards other groups. To go to the first part of the question of what can it bring to public policy, the key theoretical point is that a policy itself can become, rather than the policy objective that it has, a social or collective defense. In other words, it can become a psychosocial mechanism mobilized by the society to deal with anxieties. If that's not understood, there's likely to be a huge divergence between the policy stated objectives and the policy outcome. Uh, one, uh, first you said it at an organization, which uh, is not a country level, but a smaller unit. It requires an understanding of uh, key principles of psychoanalysis, essentially how the unconscious works. The key understanding is that if there are anxieties, there will be a very rational, albeit unconscious response, which is a mobilization of defense, called social defense, to deal with those anxieties. The same applies to nations, and when it applies to nations, it can uh, destroy the effectiveness of public policy. So it requires one, an understanding of psychoanalysis, but more importantly, an humbleness and willingness to listen and to hear what individuals and groups have to say. In Bolivia, which is a country where there was a first intake, in other words, analysis, not implementation, but analysis, evaluation, it was shown, which was quite a startling result, Bolivia is a very split society between, uh, as is often the case in Latin America, between extreme left and an extreme right. The current government, for example, came after one of the president, M. Sanchez Lozada, was kicked out and had to go into exile. So there's a volatility in politics. Yet, when one, did, when one did the psychosocial analysis, one was able to show, unconvincingly, that almost all policies, seemingly from different political regime, were actually, at a psychosocial level, meant as an undoing, as a repair act of the trauma of origin, which is the arrival of the Spaniards in Potosi, Bolivia, and the exploitation of the silver mines. So there is a, definitely an increased understanding. Another example would be Colombia, where the peace process was done very, very rationally by then President Santos, outsourced to 
overseas, in that case Cuba. And as a result, there was no room in the dialogue between the guerrilla, the FARC, and the government for empathy, for identification. That led to complication uh, once the peace process was implemented, and at least today, Bolivia is struggling with maintaining uh, the peace process for which uh, the country and its president was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize.